In this lesson, we will look at how to implement repetition in Visual Basic. This will allow our programs to execute the same set of instructions a number of times. In our first example, suppose we want to write a program which asks the user to enter three integer values. And after each request, displays the number entered and the total of the numbers entered so far. Finally, when the three numbers have been entered, the program displays a short message giving the final total. Our program should run as follows. So we enter the first number, and when we click OK, we should see the number and the total so far displayed. Now we enter the second number, let's say 9, and again we see the number and the total so far. And finally, let's enter 4. And again, we see the number and the total so far. And then a message indicating that the final total is 19. Now let's write the code for this program. We'll begin by writing the code to request just one number, add it to the total, and display both the number and the total after the number has been added to it. Here's the code we will need. First of all, we declare two integer variables, num and total. num will hold the value entered by the user, and total will hold the total of the numbers entered so far. Before we, we enter any values, the total is set to zero. We are giving the variable an initial value of 0, or if you prefer, initializing it to 0. Next, we request the value using an input box and store the value entered in the variable num. Then we add num to total and store the result in total. And finally, we display the number and total in a list box. Now, if we want to request three numbers, we can copy and paste the same piece of code so that it executes three times, as follows. And we can add a line to display the final total once all the numbers are entered. This is fine for three numbers, but if we wanted to request ten numbers, or even a hundred numbers, it's not very practical to have the same segment of code appear 10 or 100 times in our program. Visual Basic provides a structure called a for loop, which allows us to repeat a segment of code a number of times. The for loop repeats the segment of code for each value of some variable called a counter, which by default increases by 1 each time the segment of code is executed. The for loop which we would use to solve our problem is as follows. The three lines of code requesting the number, adding it to the total, and displaying both num and total have been placed inside a structure which begins for i equals 1 to 3 and finishes next i, although the i in this final line is optional. This structure is called a for loop, or a for next loop. The integer value i is the counter. As the program enters the for loop, i is set to its starting value, which is 1. Then the three lines of code that request the number add it to total and display num and total are executed. The line next i means that i increases to its next value which is 2 and the program returns to the beginning of the loop. As the variable i is to run from 1 to 3 and 2 is in this range the three lines of code are executed again i then gets the value 3 and the three lines of code are executed for a third time. 
The next value of i is 4, which is outside the range 1 to 3. So this time, we don't execute the three lines of code, but instead leave the loop and continue with the next line of code immediately after the loop, which in this case displays the final total. Let's run the program and check that it runs the way we want it. So we click on the button to begin requesting the numbers and we'll enter our first number, 6. It's read from the input box, added to total and both the number and total are displayed. Then 9 and again the number and the total are displayed and finally we'll enter 4 as we did earlier and again we see 4 and 19 being displayed and the final total is 19. If we look again at the structure of our program, you will see that only the code which is to be repeated is placed inside the loop. The line total equal to zero is placed before the loop, as it is to be executed only once, and this is to be done before the numbers are entered. Similarly, the message about final total is placed after the loop. As it only makes sense to display the final total when the loop is finished. When you plan to use loops in your program, it is important to identify which instructions should be repeated and which should not. Another important aspect of loops is to understand how the variables are changing inside a loop. A good way to familiarize yourself with this is to include code to display the values of the variables inside the loop. This will allow you to check if they are behaving as you intended. This is what we have done in our example by displaying num and total inside the loop. If we wanted also to display the current value of i inside the loop, we could do it as follows. Now, if we run our program, each time the loop executes, we should see the value of i, the number entered, and the total so far. So let's just check that this is working. So we enter our first number, 6, and we can see that our output is 1 for the value of i, 6 for num, and 6 for total. Now we'll enter our second number, and the value of i should be 2, and num is 9, and total is 15, and now our third number, and the value of i is 3. So our program is working as we intended. So the for loop gives us a way of implementing repetition in our programs. A statement like for i equals 1 to 3 means the code will be executed three times as the variable i takes on the values 1, 2 and 3. To execute the code 100 times we need only change the first line of our loop to read for i equals 1 to 100. This is certainly much easier than listing our code a hundred times in the program. A final point to make about our for loops is that they can only be used when we know exactly how many times we want to repeat a particular segment of code. If we don't know how many repetitions we want, then we'll have to use a different type of loop, which we will meet in a later lesson.